Hey everyone, Andrew here, Melbourne Superman. So in follow-up to my last video about the new Superman suit reveal, I thought it'd be fun to come on and talk a little bit about my favorite Superman movies uh, and ranking them from least favorite to favorite favorite. And I'll talk a little bit about each one and what I thought about them and, and what my experiences have been with them. So, but before I do that, please, if you like this channel, if you're enjoying the ride, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, ding, ding, really would help me out, really would help me out. Like the Superman reveal <clears throat> video got like 10,000 views, a ton of likes, ton of comments, a lot of engagement. All y'all were like talking with each other about it, which was great to see the community going. Uh, I'd love to see more of that on my channel. Uh, and I got like an extra like 200 subscribers from that video alone. So can we like keep doing that? That'd be really cool. Uh, that'd be actually really cool because basically the video after that got like 50 views and that's not really cool, but fair enough. Uh, so yeah, so again, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, ding, ding. Uh, okay, so here we go, so right into it. So I'm going to do this list, uh, I, I threw it together. I think you're probably, some of you are going to really disagree hard with it, some of you are going to agree with it, some of you are probably not gonna have any feelings whatsoever on it. So. I'm only going to react to the movies, the, the Superman movies from 1978 and moving forward. No fan films, none of the original stuff like with Kirk Allen, all that stuff. Just sort of modern, quote unquote, modern day stuff. So, okay. Number 10, number 10. The Justice League, right? The Justice League by Joss Whedon. So. <laughs> I remember when this one first came out. I was really excited about it. I, I really wanted to love it. And like all these movies, just to just to let you know, I don't hate like any of these movies. I think a lot of them, all of them have their flaws. Uh, but there are certainly ones that I, I, I prefer. And some of them I liked at the time, but then I watched them more and more. And I'm like, oh, well, there's a lot wrong with these. So the Justice League, when it came out, I was really excited to see it. Uh, I think we all know about the Henry Cavill mustache thing. It's like, it just kind of ruined it a lot. I mean, it was just like kind of funny. That first scene is just like in your face when he's doing that interview with the kids. And the suit, a eh, little bit in your face with the chrome. Uh, but overall, it was a fun movie. Like it didn't, there was, there was a, a lot of plot holes that were explained a lot better in the Snyder Cut, which I'll get to. But I mean, I think it tried to be something it wasn't. It tried to be the Avengers. It tried to be Iron Man. It tried to be too funny. And I know that we're all looking for a little bit more lighthearted and less dark in all these movies, but that kind of went the other way. All the characters became sort of parodies of themselves almost. And they were just, the movie was too much making fun of itself. That said, I love the score. I love the, the John Williams coming in at the end. Uh, I, I, I did enjoy that. But Least favorite. I mean, can I watch it? Yeah, sure. But there's just a little bit too many, too many things to ignore. Um, again, add your, add your opinions to it. Add your, what, in the comment section down below, what you think. The next I'll go, so number nine is Superman 3. So Superman 3 with Christopher Reeve, Richard Pryor. Now, a lot of you will not like the fact that a Christopher Reeve movie is so high up my list or down my list, number nine. And again, it's not that I didn't like the movie. It's just that for me, this is where it belongs on the list because A, this movie out of the original four, I feel went so far away from what the movies were and it became a Richard Pryor movie, which is fine. But like, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't to me a Superman movie. It was a comedy. It was, I mean, sure. It maybe might've reflected the comics of that day a little bit more. But it just, there was so much stuff that I would have liked to have seen in it. Like, for example, Gus, Richard Pryor. Like, he's this computer genius, but we don't know how. I would have much preferred it as if he already knew that he was a genius rather than finding it by accident. But there was no real work for him because at that time, there wasn't a lot of work going around for basic computer an analysis and everything. I mean, I guess. Or like plot twists, like Lorelai, who keeps playing the dumb one, but she comes out with these like smart things. And it's like, oh wow, she's really smart, but they never go anywhere with it. Like a cool plot twist would have been like, oh, Lorelai's actually in charge. She's calling the shots, but 
they, they had a lot of these opportunities and they never really went with it. I do love the junkyard scene, Superman versus Superman. That's cool. I love like how he first reveals in the uh, photo booth. That's a lot of fun. The, the music is great. I think the last, the, the closing credit music is probably some of my favorite. The flying is some of the best. Chris looks the best in that movie, I think. Um, but it was just, there were just things like the whole Smallville thing. Eh, Lana Lang was great. Um, but like the Smallville High School reunion when they're all just in like a gym and everybody's on like these dinner suits. I'm like, stop it, stop it. Go to a hotel uh, re uh, reception or something. Uh, but I mean, the, 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 the slapstick was a little bit too much for me. So Superman 3. Number eight, Superman Returns. So Superman Returns, man, I wanted to love this movie. And don't get me wrong, there is a special place in my heart for it. I think it was cast really well. Don't need to talk about Kevin Spacey. Whatever that is, fine, whatever, like that's not. But I think it was cast really well. I think Brandon Routh did a hell of a job uh, carrying the torch. Like they were, obviously this was a continuation off from Superman 2, right? So my problems with Superman Returns, I think sort of, it was, there wasn't enough, I feel, I don't know. I don't know if I can explain it with science, but there wasn't enough Superman in it. And I know I, th I know he was in it quite a bit, but it just, I didn't love the, I didn't mind the coloring of it, but it was just a bit muted. And, you know, the script itself could have been so much better. It was a really interesting thing, but it was almost boring. It was almost boring to watch because it's just like dragging on and dragging on. And it's just like, all right, when are we going to get to Superman in the Superman movie? Like, what are we doing? I think, um, I think the whole thing about him having a kid, which is great. Had, we have questions about the whole memory wipe in Superman 2, though. It's like, oh, wow, I'm pregnant, but I don't know how. Um, if you know, you know. I think Richard White, great character. I love James Marston. I think it was just an interesting thing. But again, there are things in there that I don't love. Like, he kind of just x-raying the house, flying above it, kind of weird. Um, and it, I don't think it was shot that, like, I don't think it was meant to be weird, obviously, but it just kind of doesn't hold up. It's kind of like you know, Superman's just like spying on his ex-girlfriend. It's crazy. Um, like, I don't know, like, I would have loved just a little bit more, no more action, just a little bit more something. It just needed something. It was lacking something. That said... When he first shows up and he saves that plane, he lands in the, the, the baseball stadium, that's really awesome. I think the reveal of him could have been so much better with the music, but the music, it just, there was no, it wasn't any fanfare. It's just like, he opens and he's going and it's whatever, like in the first movie, it's just like, it's a big thing. Um, the score was great. I love the score, John Ottman. But yeah, it was just, it was overall kind of, uh, I don't know, blah? Like... But again, special place in my heart. I love it. It's the first Superman movie that I saw in theaters, and I, I watch it again. Number seven. Number seven. Batman v Superman. Uh, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck. So I like this movie solely because I love the suit, the Superman suit. I think it's my favorite one on screen. Well, Superman, Christopher Reeve is my favorite suit. But this is like my second favorite, right? Um, but. I, I didn't, like, everybody hates this movie. I don't know why. Like, I mean, I, I know why. There's, like, plot holes and everything. And it's like, all like, why does this guy hate him? Why, why, why are we doing this with the, the United Nations or whatever it was? Uh, why is Jimmy Olsen getting killed in the first act? Uh, you know, what's, what's really going on with this movie? Like, what is, what, what are we doing here? Why are we creating this? Why is Lex Luthor more of, like, a Riddler Joker kind of thing? But I thought it was shot, like... I thought it was shot really well. I thought it looked great. Uh, I, I I do like Henry Cavill as Superman. Everybody's always like, oh, he's missing the lighthearted charm and this and that. And it's like, but he has that. Like, he's got that boyish charm. He's got that smile when he needs it. But the script didn't really give him that. But he kind of showed that where he could. I would have liked to have seen more. Agreed. So, at number six, the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut was a lot of fun. Like... Okay, and so this goes back to the plot holes that were in Justice League. And they explain a lot of them in the Snyder Cut. There's a lot less whatever. 
like, it, and it's just more to the point. But that said, you can't have a four hour movie like all the time. So I get it. But I thought it was the score was fantastic. The, the, the explanation of all the characters, their backstories, their relationships with each other, why they're doing what they're doing was fantastic. Getting into what exactly the mother boxes are and why Steppenwolf and Darkseid want to get this anti-life equation. Like it was just all shot really well. And some like my favorite scenes, my favorite shots are like when they're fighting in the park and you see like the flash running and, and Superman's just like looking at them and they go in slow motion. I think those are so good. And it just explains so much. I could have done without the post credit scene. Like I didn't, that kind of like with the Joker and everything that kind of went on a little bit too long. Um, but it was, it was really nice to see. It was, it was cool to see it all kind of come to fruition. And I really, I love the black suit. It's just slick. It's cool. I, I suited up in mine this morning and I was like, this is cool. Like a black suit Superman. I'm here for it. Uh, and, and thank you for, for, for the gentleman who, who did tell me that, uh, the suit that Henry Cavill wore was actually the red and blue one. They just color corrected it in post, which I had a feeling I had heard something like that, but there you go. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, number 5. Uh, top 5. Superman 4, Quest for Peace. Probably the, well, it, it, Superman 3 wasn't the film that killed the franchise. It was Superman 4, but the thing that I like about Superman 4 was that it went back to the original sort of equation, almost. It had a little bit more feel like the first two movies, and it was not slapstick at all, although they, it could have been if there was a nu the Nuclear Man 1 scenes were kept in there, which, um, if you don't know, YouTube it. Deleted scenes. Uh, so there were originally two Nuclear Man. There were a lot of weird plot twists and crappy shots. Yes, you could see the green screen, you could see the strings, you could see the, the reflection of the green screen, you could... Uh, um, uh, people breathing in space, which is weird. Um, just a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things that went wrong with the movie because the budget was cut in half. Thanks a lot, Masters of the Universe. Uh, so Canon shot that one. But I mean, I think that, I think its heart was in the right place, right? It had a nice message. It was, it was really cool. It was, it was, it was good, but uh, it's just, it's a, it is a tough watch. It is a tough watch because it just doesn't hold up, especially on televisions today. But its heart was in the right place, and that's why I rank it number five. Number four, the Donner Cut. Superman 2, the Donner Cut. For me, this is purely because it's just kind of cool to watch to see what Richard Donner would have wanted in this thing. Uh, there's some scenes in there that weren't in the uh, theatrical cut, and they're a lot of fun. Obviously, clearly test footage, like when the way that Lois finds out that he's Superman. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. We get to see Marlon Brando again. We see really Gene Hackman come more to fruition. Uh, so really, really a lot of fun that one, but you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't have the same to me as the theatrical cut. Okay. Top three, number three, man of steel at me, shoot me, fire me, fine. But my third favorite movie is man of steel. Uh, a lot of people don't like this one. I love this one. I love the score. Henry Cavill just looks like Superman. Like he just is Superman. I mean, pff, he, obviously Christopher Reeve is my Superman, but Henry Cavill, perfect casting choice. Like just amazing. The suit, the effects, the, the, the power. This is the first time that we've really seen on screen how powerful Superman can be. Like how fast he is, uh, 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 what he can do, what he struggles with. I love the flashbacks going back to Smallville and how he's, you know, having these struggles with his parents and, I mean, the death scene of Jonathan Kent. Like, I mean, look, could he have saved him without people raising an eyebrow? Yeah, probably. But Jonathan Kent was just like, nah. <laughs> he was so adamant that his son was protected that he sacrificed his own life. And whilst it was needless, maybe, it, the gesture. It was the gesture. But I love it, I, I, I really do. I think, yes, there could have been a little bit more chemistry between him and Lois Lane before the kiss, because it just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I think the Krypton stuff was a lot of fun, but those ships leaving Krypton, eh, it was a design flaw. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, 
but Man of Steel, and I think Michael Shannon as Zod is just like far out, man. Like he's so intense, like he is so intense. And I just really enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed it, it was a lot of fun. Um, well, I remember when I saw it on screen, when it first came out, I just remember leaving the theater immediately wanted to see it again. So there you go. Um, number two, number two, top two, Superman the movie, Christopher Reeve. Uh, a lot of you probably would have thought that that was going to be my number one. It's not. It's close. It is close. But I love Superman the movie I grew up with. It is just the music, the feeling of it, the suit, the relationship between him and Lois, how it's shot, how it looks, the effects for the time. You really could believe that a man could fly. And Christopher Reeve, he just embodies everything that you want Superman to be. It's just... He, he, he's he got that smile that makes you feel safe. He's got that assertiveness that makes you feel like he's going to take care of what needs to be taken care of. He's got the emotions. He's got the humor. He's got everything. He looks great in the suit. Like, I mean, it's a complete spandex suit. And for him to look that good in it, I mean, it's just a testament. Like, Henry Cavill looks great in the suit, right? The, his suit is padded not to give him more size, but to accentuate what he already has. Henry Cavill, out of that suit, looks pretty much the same as he does in the suit. So, But the way that Christopher Reeve just pulls it off, his walk, his stance, the way that he goes from Clark to Superman, just like, it's just out of this world. Um, my favorite, one of my, uh, it's my second favorite, the reveal when he's running on the street and you just hear that music and that fanfare that John Williams scored, it's just like, it's amazing. And then he flies up and <laughs> it's like the best. It's like, uh, easy miss, I've got you. You've got me, who's got you? That's like such like an iconic moment and I love it. Number one, top favorite movie, Superman 2, the theatrical cut. Now, again, this was close. But I just, I love Superman 2. I love how it plays out. I love the opening. I love the three criminals. Zod, Ursa, Nam. The score. The moments. Like, when they're doing that fight in Metropolis. And, uh, you know, or before the fight in Metropolis. And uh, the three uh, the three supervillains are taking over the, the Daily Planet. And then you just see the newspapers floating, or floating, uh, flying away in the wind because that, that gust of wind from Superman flying, and then you just see him show up, and you just see him outside. Excuse me, General, would you like to step outside, or would you care to step outside? And it's, you hear that with the music, and it's like, that was missing from the Donner Cut. Sorry, but excuse me, General, would you care to step outside? Missing from the Donner Cut. It does have its faults, of course. Uh, Superman, you know, Going back to that diner and messing with that guy that messed with him is kind of like Superman. You got to be bigger than that man. <laughs> yeah. Just like in Man of Steel when 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 when, when uh, Clark just takes this guy's truck and puts it on the telephone pole or whatever. It's like that's that guy's livelihood. He's definitely going to go home and kill himself. Hopefully not. Um, but Superman too. Ah, oh, just love it. Like the humor is right, the drama is right, the stakes are high. And you just feel it every step of the way. So I really, really love Superman too. Um, and when I was a kid, I, I, I loved the ripping of the S and just like throwing it as this big cellophane thing. I don't know why, I just love that. But anyway, so those have been my top 10. So those are my top 10 in order. Justice League, Superman 3, Superman Returns, BVS, Snyder Cut, Superman 4, Donner Cut, Man of Steel, Superman the Movie, Superman 2, the theatrical cut. So. Let me know what your thoughts are. How, where do you rank the Superman movies? What do you think about my rankings? Look, thank you so much for watching this. I really hope you enjoyed it. And please, again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, ding, ding. Follow me at Melbourne Superman on Instagram, and I will catch you next time.